Right, let's, well, for me anyway, take a break from some of the repotting that I've done. And I still have some to do, as you will see, but uh, I have been saying a lot about growing in Lekka, self-watering in organic, and I am excluding at this point the lava rock because the point of this video is to compile, consolidate some of the pointers I've been making in all the other videos. And I just thought I'm gonna, while I was doing another batch, I thought just stop for a minute and um, get these thoughts and pointers together into one small video to show what signs to look out for when it's time to repot your orchid from the semi-hydro or self-watering method if you have no clear pots or anything else to look out for. And it's not like every individual sign is, oh, that I need to repot it now. But these observations could be useful in being able to assess when is it a good time and a right time in this inorganic growing method, excluding lava rock, because if there is a, let's say, a collective of maybe two or three pointers, then you get a much better idea of this one's a go, this one needs to be addressed. So briefly, just as an intro, I've pulled some plants as examples. And um, we're gonna start with Little Fairy because we saw her in a video. And that is one of the pointers that I look out for. Not the only one, please. And throughout this whole video, it's not about this is now an example and I have to repot. This is just sort of a little list to help compile certain things to be on the lookout for. If then there's two, three that add up on one pot, then it's a great candidate. So the little fairy we looked at in a video and I was saying, why am I going to look at this orchid specifically right now? And that was because I saw that the new growth of this season was extremely stunted in comparison to what was the years before. So one thing is you get the orchid as a division, then it has a stunted growth because it is acclimatizing and getting roots and getting used to its new environment. Then you get the next year's growth, it should then match what the orchid's potential is and even possibly bigger, higher, taller, thicker. And then the orchid is established but then if the subsequent growth is smaller and nothing has changed, your care hasn't changed, your fertilizer hasn't changed, and yet you get a stunted growth, something you can only see once the growth is developed, obviously, but at least then you can intervene in time for next year. Then there's a problem in the pot. And normally it is the fact that you have an orchid that dumps its roots periodically, and then there's toxicity in the pot, not enough oxygen, there's nothing there to sustain a new growth but the reservoirs in the back. And we looked at Little Fairy and we saw that it was exactly the case. So your growth above the pot can show you what's going in the pot, you need to take it out, ideally when new roots grow. But when it comes to this growing method, this is the advantage, you can always remove the orchid and intervene even if you don't have root growth, and that is when I, what I call an emergency repot. And it shouldn't affect the orchid whatsoever because the media is the same and there's no deterioration once you've cleaned her up. And another point that I wanted to show you is when you fill up an orchid for the flush, for example, normally you get the water gargling, bubbling. And if it doesn't recede anymore, the pot is pretty full. Roots can be fantastic, doesn't mean the roots are bad. It's just there's a lot going on in the pot and that needs to be addressed for the health of the orchid in the future, for its continuity also in the pot and to avoid this point here, stunted growth. So when the water stops receding on your flush and you can see it's just staying there and you don't have to top up anymore, that is another sign in my books, what I look out for, that could be helpful to determine, I need to look into this orchid. And in a following video at some point, we will look into this orchid because she is growing a new growth here, and I is swelling up back here, even though she is in sheath. 
and there is a swelling in the sheets. I'm gonna take care of her at this point in time because I don't want another 12 months of this. The same thing is, for example, let's fill it up. Another point is, just as a segue, when you fill up an orchid, a pot, in order to flush, it has to recede a little bit in order to know that there's something going on. You can see the bubbles in the back, and that is that the pot is aerated, there is oxygen in there, everything is good, and you can see that bit by bit it is receding. So as long as you have a receding water line when your purpose of flushing, then you know that everything is okay in the pot. I wouldn't repot at this point in time. This is just a point to show the difference between having to refill a little bit and not refilling. So this is how you know everything's fine in here. There's plenty of room and plenty of oxygen. And then we have another little pointer, which I always enjoy seeing. The obvious one, when your lecker rises above the brim of the pot. So you can see here on the little ferry, I don't fill the lecker up to the top. Sometimes it's because the orchid is a climber. But most of the time, because if more roots grow, I can always top up and pretty much bury the new roots and they would then be in the pot. But if that is not needed, then this is how I leave the pot with plenty of room and air circulation around the base. And then you can see how the lecker rises. And it doesn't mean that you haven't filled the pot up properly when you repot like I do over there. It just means there's a lot going on in the pot. The orchid is fine. She has just finished blooming. So there's nothing wrong with her at all. And if I pour water in, it may be stagnant. It may bubble. It doesn't matter. But in that case, when you see it like this, like arising out of the pot, you know that pot is full of roots. So oxygen supply will be limited depending on how much you flush in a self-watering system. I only flush every time the reservoir is empty. From orchid to orchid, it differs. But regardless of all that, this is a sure sign something needs to be done. And then there's another sign if you're not quite certain with all these little indicators and pointers, and I need both hands for this, and that's why I put you on the tripod. Um, there's another, well, two more actually. Let me just show you this one. This one's pretty straightforward. Not always the only indicator because it could just be one root doing this, but when you can't get the tag out, and I'm really pulling hard, I mean, here I have two indicators. I don't have root growth. That's not the indicator. The indicator is here. My leka is above the surface. It's absolutely rising. And my tag is completely stuck, like really stuck. So it could be one root holding onto it. If you had a case like here, maybe there's one root in the back here holding on to the tag but you know that the pot is fine because it gargled and when you fill it up, the water recedes. But in this case, we have two indicators. Something needs to be addressed. This is also another one if your tag isn't coming out. There's quite a lot of activity going on and the lecker rises, great indicators. There needs to be something done. Am I gonna do something about it now? I will actually, even this time of year, we're almost, uh, yeah, we're almost at the end of September because I don't want another 12 months of her like this. Even though I don't have roots, and that is why I love this method, I love inorganic, I can intervene and be gentle about it and then put her back up. All right, so yes, I will address this orchid. And finally, what I also, <laughs> a clear indicator, a clear must do something here immediately indicator is when the pot is rock hard. I mean, I can't squeeze it. So the lecker here hasn't risen as you can see. This is okay, lecker wise. But 
the water wasn't receding when I poured it in. The pot is full. And you want any more confirmation than that? What you need to do is just give it a squeeze. If it is rock hard and only gives every once in a while, you have your second confirmation to do something and a repotting is necessary. Now, I again, don't have any roots growing here new. I think these are just the most recent, but I have time. I've got new growths coming. Yes, they are in sheath, but this cannot stay like this for another 12 months. So I'm not quite sure how many little pointers that were, maybe five or six, but um, I thought I would just compile these examples into one video, keeping it a little bit simple. And yes, I shall repeat these pointers in other videos that I'm going to be making, simply because I don't know who sees which video or at what time, at what point. So now I'm topping it up simply because I emptied out some of it, but there is no gargling. There is no sound coming out of this pot so whatsoever. You see, there are no bubbles, nothing. This is absolutely chock-a-block full. Um, just to recap, I don't know, five or six pointers. I'll make sure it's clear on the editing. But these are the signs I've sort of been pointing out when I intervene and when I don't. And usually it's about, um, depending on the orchid and it's how vigorous it is, it is about a two year cycle. Now I have a very vigorous Dawiana. She's absolutely killing it in this setup. And I did a video on her on the reed pot because I had the indicator of my little fairy in the back here. And I didn't want this next growth to be stunted. I had a very hard pot and I bumped her up. I didn't do any cleanup. There was nothing necessary. She's absolutely killing it in this setup. So. This is one of the examples that where you can intervene no matter if you're getting new roots or not. In this case I was, which was a good thing, but you can intervene and get in there and take care of the orchid and take care of the root ball. So there's just one other thought that I had because we, we did a pastoral innocence as well, uh, potting up in one of the videos. That was an emergency repot and that, I don't know which point I'm at right now, but that would be a point also if your pot breaks, especially in a setup like this. There's no way, for example, to get a pot out if the rim is broken. So in that case as well, that's something that of course is an indicator. It's time to repot the orchid. I've had two cases of that since I started growing in this method. So that's not too bad, but just as another pointer, if your pot is broken and you can't handle or manipulate or work with the orchid anymore, time for a repot. Without taking notes, I just sort of like thought, okay, take a break, collect the thoughts, collect the points that I look for and compile them into a video. I hope that this was helpful and, and maybe, I don't know, maybe useful to some that, that would say, well, what about this, what about that? and not have them sort of staggered around in different videos, all these different pointers. I don't know. You tell me if you grow in this method, are these some of the pointers you look for? Is there anything I might be missing while I look around on, at my collection? I'd be really uh, happy to learn a little bit more about how to observe the orchids and their needs and when to react. I would appreciate that. So again, I hope this was helpful and uh, Thank you so, so much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and have a wonderful day. Bye.